I want to break down the month of November on how I had a gross profit of about $50,000. It was a very bad month mentally, emotionally, and a bunch of internal warfare that affected how I traded and how I executed. I did a lot of good things. I did a lot of bad things. And there's a lot of room for improvement that I'm going to show you all in this video that not only I can learn from, but my goal that everybody else watching this can as well. And just for transparency, this is my broker statement. For the month of November, a gross profit of 50675 And now I just want to talk about my first mistake, which was a lot of the trades that I took this month, specifically three different full days, I had correct analysis, but really bad timing on those setups. For example, a trade that I took on Wednesday, November 8th, was a planned 11 to 1 risk to reward. The trading setup on this, again, correct analysis, just mistiming, was I was looking to short a rally into 4405, 4403 supply that if buyers can become trapped, it's a good area for longs to buy a breakout and for sellers to step in and could cause a short-term reversal down. Now, if you've all been following me, you all know I love scalping, specifically using order flow. And the way that I trade and the way that I confirm my setups, I prefer and what I have tested with my data is my best setups and the ones that I make the most amount of money from usually work right away after I enter, meaning there's very minimal risk going against me. It may take a few seconds, a few minutes, but the way I time my entries with the confirmation, usually the market rejects or bounces directly after I enter that setup. So from this plan here on the 8th, I was looking to short a supply rejection, trapping a bunch of buyers, speculating they're going to stop out and cause a further sell off down. And I took my first short at 4405 when this level rejected. It did not work out right away on this green arrow. Instead, we came back up and I stopped out of this trade. Now, second trade on November 8th, same analysis, same thesis. After stopping out for break even, about 10 minutes later, I've re entered short at 4403 seeing a higher low form on the tape. Risk is tight, only three points. And looking at the stats here, since I had a three point risk, now my plan is still over two to one. And eventually this trade did not work out. We broke above the high of day and I stopped out for a $2,000 loss. So now I'm starting the day over two, break even and $2,000 loss. And now you can see the market eventually did sell off. Now, this is an example where re-entering after stopping out multiple times will work very well because now my third trade for this day was a $5,000 profit off of the same exact analysis. But now on the third time, I correctly timed this move and the one winner outweighed the two previous other trades. So this is an example of when your third or fourth attempt does work out because the third attempt sold off we came into the target and that one winner outweighed those two other trades. That's a good example of risk management. Now it doesn't always work out this way because on November 16th, I had four trades and I went 0 for four losing on every single trade. Now the pro of how I trade is I'm when I'm scalping this way and I'm confirming my entries, my risk to reward is very, very high because I'm looking to capitalize on a fast move. So this trade on the 16th of November, we were spotting some buyers at the low using the tape sold off, found buyers at the low, putting risk on at 4512, targeting a high of daybreak. Eventually the market sold off and we did not get that break. And I stopped out at my stop for an $875 loss. Now the next trade, same exact analysis. You know, we could see the market here selling off, putting in lower lows and also putting in lower highs. So the market was downtrending on an intraday context coming into the green line, which was that level of support that we were spotting on the time and sales. So essentially a strong downtrending market. I was looking to capitalize on an upside reversal by spotting buyers at a support level through the tape. Now my fourth trade went against all my rules. I have a personal rule of thumb that if I take three losing trades like this back to back to back, I walk away because I tend to get emotional trying to make those profits back. On this setup, what happened here was the market did in fact break that support level. 
And my thesis on the S&P 500 was to short a rally or short a pop enticing longs that making this thing look like it's going to break out, that they would become trapped where I can take it short, sized down to capitalize on a downside reversal. Now this went against my rules. I was completely wrong on this thesis, completely wrong on the analysis. And the earlier three trades that I took long in this general area right here did work out later in the day. And my analysis was correct, but I missed timed those three entries. If I waited an extra 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and caught the low near 42, uh, 4,500, I would have been able to capitalize on a 30-point rally in my favor. Now, the same thing occurred on the last day of the month, on Thursday, November 30th. The market was severely downtrending. You could see here lower lows, lower highs. And I had a demand zone at 4,553 that as we were coming into this level on the downtrend, every single time we hit it, I was spotting buyers on the tape indicating that, okay, we're spotting buyers here. We're at a demand zone. Let me try to put risk on long at 4555 for the first trade. Now, one thing that I do want to mention here is I never know and nobody else anywhere in the stock market will know if a setup will work out for them 100% guaranteed. Traders will know if it's a higher probability or lower probability setup, but the outcome is unknown. The only outcome that we can know is how much risk that we are willing to put on and how much risk we're willing to accept where we invalidate our thesis at our stop loss. So in this case, I was risking four points to make 10 points, which is about a two and a half to one risk to reward. This thing did not work out and I did not want to make this trade turn red on me, which is not a good habit to develop at all. And I got out for a $500 win. So going back to the dashboard here, I want to just highlight the average win loss trade statistic right now. So obviously you want to go for two to one or better, but my stats became very skewed with how much my average win was because what I would do is, is on days like that, I would get out for a small break even, small little one point, two point win, and it would lower my average win loss trade ratio. And a lot of this had to do with emotional mistakes of attachment to money or attachment of the outcome that I wanted to be right and not lose money on the setup. So going back to this trade, I don't view it as a win. I Yes, I made profits on it. And yes, it was only a one point gain. Again, like this, this trade was 10 full-sized ES contracts. So I don't look at it as a win at all because I only got in one full handle above my entry. Then the same thing, the market came back into the demand zone, similar to the two other days that we have went over. I mean, this is pretty much identical. I got long again at 11.51. Four, five, five, three, four point stop. Now 12 point reward, even better risk to reward. And again, and like another pro of how I trade and how I execute is I don't mind re-entering because sometimes I can get a better entry. In this case, I had a better entry and a better entry means if my risk is the same, I'm going to get a higher reward, maximizing my risk to reward ratio. So same analysis came into this demand zone and this trade did not work out stopped out for a $2,000 loss. Now my third trade, I view this as a loss as well because I only sold about two ticks um, above my entry. Same thing, downtrend, came in, found buyers, took it long, and the trade did not work out for me. Now, correct analysis, wrong timing because guess what happened later in the day? Later in the day, we got a 30-point rally from this level. And 30-point rally on size that I'm trading is a very big payday. So the the one negative to my trades this month, and this happens and it's normal and I'm okay with it because if I do time it correctly on the re-entry, as you saw from that first day, the win is taking care of the losing trades. However, if I don't get the re-entry on the correct timing, then it's gonna most likely be a red day if I don't find that re-entry, even though my analysis is correct, and in this example was correct, like those three other days. And then little mistakes like this setup that I'm gonna show you right here affected my performance on other setups because it was just such a small mistake and such a stupid mistake that was, again, a, lo a losing trade in my eyes. Yes, I made profits on it, but it was a losing trade in my eyes. Essentially, what I was seeing here was, pull up the intraday commentary, and again, like throughout the day, I post my thoughts, my levels, what I'm watching, things like that. 
What I was watching here at 10 o'clock Eastern time was 4409, which is this green box you see over here. If it could hold and become supported, then there's a good chance the purple line, which was the high of day, can trade. A minute after, I had longs at 4410 off of that analysis. And for some odd reason, my stop loss or my target never triggered. This is going to bring me into this very, very important point here that I'm confident if you listen to this advice, it will help you out tremendously if you stick with it. There are two ways that I sell a position. Now, point number two could be a little different because there sometimes are red flags in a setup that makes you have to adjust your stop loss depending on new information and new structure. However, if you are not aware of these red flags, the best way to do this is sell a position only if your target hits or your stop loss triggers. In this example, if I followed my stop loss, which was the low of day, targeting high of day, so about a two point risk for a nine point reward, very good risk to reward ratio. And again, like I'm not going for 20, 30 point swings in the market. You know, I'm going for 10, 15 point moves with 10, seven full size ES contracts. So I don't want anybody to like look at the P and L as like large or small amounts. It's all about perspective. It's all about the R multiple and it's all about how you execute your setups. Don't look at my profits and compare them to yourself. I'm trading with 10, seven, sometimes even five full size ES contracts. It's more important to look at the R multiple. That is the most important statistic in trading. So here we go. I'm in long, this thing rallies up, we sell off lower, and I stop out for a basically one point gain on this for no odd reason other than I didn't want this trade to go red on me. My target never hit, my stop loss never triggered, and if I followed this plan, this would have been like a $5,000 profit. And now I have a $300 gain on my account that lowers my average win to loss little statistic that I showed you guys earlier. And this thing kept running up, and little stupid mistakes like this, I just continuously did throughout the month. And I'm not going to lie, like it affects you mentally for the next couple of trades. And I'm always one to stress, like focus in the present. Don't look at your past trades and, and make them hurt your present ones. But like this month, I felt victimized to that. And it was something that I was internally going through. And I just have to say it to be transparent, but it was just, you know, something that I struggled with severely. These stats could have been much better and much higher if I didn't make a lot of little stupid mistakes. And that's why I feel like I underperformed mentally that it just affected my execution aspect to it. So now some things that I did really, really well with. This was a trade on Wednesday, November 29th, 10 full-size ES contracts. I took the market short literally at the high of this day for a really nice all-day sell-off. The analysis on this was I was spotting some sellers on the tape at 4590 and I wasn't going for a large move. I really was only going for an 8 point to about 15 point target on a 4 point risk. So the lowest R multiple was 2 to 1, the highest was about 4 to 1. We were also watching VIX. I made a bunch of posts on my Instagram about this. And if you're not following me on my Instagram at investitrade, I'll post a link in the description below to do so. It's a really good resource. I post things that you're just not going to find anywhere else, good tips, tricks, recaps pretty much on a daily basis. Again, the link is in the description below. But for this setup, I short the high of day and my planned risk to reward was about a 2.7 R multiple. And by the time I sold my last position, I got out near end of day and executed a four and a half R multiple getting higher than my planned. Now, one thing about my trading is me personally, I don't like holding runners very often unless the structure is there or unless I have multiple pieces of context that say this move can last a while. This has to do with how I enter and why I enter. I'm going for very short term little micro scalps in the market, looking to capitalize on where there is a lot of pain, where a lot of people are stopping out at. Just because I want the entry to work out pretty fast, I'm not usually going for larger trend moves. This is what works for me. This is what I have the most success with. So holding runners is not something that I normally like to do unless I have, I have about four or five points that if I could get 
three or four of those points validating to be true, then I will tend to hold runners and scale out along the way. As you can see here, I got in short at the red arrow, took profits along the way on that awesome sell off. And this trade worked out right away. And then I held pretty much all day and came back end the day near the lower day and got this four and a half to one R multiple capitalizing on those runners. So this was a really, really good setup. And then some other things that I also did very well, this kind of relates back to that red flag example. So in this case right here on the S&P 500, it was about a $400 loss. This was one of two trades this day. Planned R multiple two to one. By the time I sold, I did not want to hold on to this trade because I have something that I call a dead position. And for me personally, I shorted the high of this day right here. So we have a high here, we have a high here, and we have another high here. So my thesis was we keep coming into this high, sellers are attacking the market, we're rejecting it, let me try it short because I'm shorting the high, my risk is gonna be very, very minimal, and I was going for a low of daybreak. Now the issue with this setup was because of how balanced the market was, going for that larger move is not always proper in that fitting context. Balance means buyers and sellers are essentially fighting, agreeing on price, and they're waiting for a higher time frame participant to step in and bring us up or down out of balance. So my entry on this setup was a very, very good entry. My negative to this setup was I did not take profits at the lower balanced range low. I was looking to take profits on a low of daybreak. This trade worked out as I was up about $3,000 on this first drop after my entry. But then we got a rally up and I was saying, I'm not holding on to this dead position. It worked out. My target did not hit. We came very close to it by about two or three points. But now we're rallying back up to the high. Let me exit when I can for a small loss. If it did want to reject, again, like I said, I always like looking for re-entries, maybe at a better risk to reward ratio. And in this case, it did not. And it kept rallying up. And that was a good move by getting out of dead position when it didn't make sense to hold on it to my stop loss, which was above the previous high. This makes me minimize my risk when I am incorrect on it or minimize my risk when my original thesis has now a less likely chance of occurring because if I held on until the high of day, I would have taken a four point loss on this or about a, about a $2,000 loss on it. So I'd rather cut it for a $400 loss instead of holding on to this dead position, maximizing my loss. Another good trade, size down slightly, Tuesday, November uh, 21st. The analysis for this setup was similar to like shorting the balanced range high that's kind of a, a really good setup for me because I like buying when other people are selling and selling when other people are buying. And it especially happens with breakout traders in not a fitting market for breakouts. Fitting markets for breakouts are when the volume, volatility, and momentum are high when we are trending. When the market is balanced, it's best to fade the moves. So in this example, what I saw here was the market was failing to break the high. We were balancing out and I shorted the pop as other people were buying, I was shorting into them at the high, targeting simply a low a day break into demand below. And I was able to capitalize on a nine, 10 point sell off just by spotting the range high. It worked out immediately in my favor and we got a sell off into my target, did not hold runners like I normally do not like to do. And this setup worked and I caught literally almost the low of day because this thing bounced. It was a quick little five to six uh, minute move for a $3,000 profit. Then where I sold at, down here at this low, found buyers on the tape. So now in the commentary tab, if this level could hold and we don't break under low a day, trying longs targeting the 50s and then the 52s was a higher probability of a setup. We dipped down, we stopped out all of those weak longs, we picked up liquidity, held where we found those buyers, and we were able to capitalize on a long side move up, 2.1 risk, uh, risk to reward on a nice little 20 minute trade. So there's a lot of things that I did right this month. I can sit here for three hours and, and break down every single trade in depth of confirmations, where my targets were, why they were there. I try to do this every single day in the Discord so everybody could see and hear and understand my thoughts of why I'm watching things, why my levels are there, and I just break it down in depth in there. 
One thing, again, like I'm not very happy with was the mentality, was the internal battles that I went through inside and outside of the markets. Things outside of the markets definitely bled into my trading this month. There's a lot of personal stuff that just made me trade and, and, and think and have these thoughts in the market and made me execute differently, such as, you know, the winning trades, this should be a, a much higher number, this should be a much lower number. The win percentage, my, my, my win loss ratio um, is not bad. 63% is not bad. I don't want people to think that, you know, having a 60% win rate is, is not good. Because with a 60% win rate and a two to one, three to one, four to one risk to reward ratio, you know, you're sitting at the top of the game. Don't aim for a high win loss ratio. Aim for a high uh, R multiple or a high dollar win to dollar loss ratio. This is a more important statistic than a win percentage. Win percentage is not as relevant as R multiple. You have to start, and for me personally, I'm going to work on getting this number much higher next month. If you can aim for this number to be high, then you can aim for this number to be much lower. Your goal is to not win as much times. Your goal is to lose as much times as possible, but your winners are taking care of the losers. Don't take that literally saying, oh, karma's telling us to lose. It's not the case. I'm telling you that when you do lose, it's okay to lose and you could afford to lose because it's managed. That when your wins take care of the losses, it will outweigh every other negative aspect that you're thinking about, about taking losses with a lower win rate. So it definitely was a rocky a month, lots of mental battles, and I will aim to improve next month. As always, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like, comment any questions, and definitely subscribe to the channel and check out the links in the description below. But peace.